Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode. Uh, this episode is all about our brand new caravan. Now the uh, caravan is a Lotus Trooper. It is a 23.3 foot triple bunk family bunk uh, family caravan. And I'm gonna take you all around the outside and show you what all the features are on the outside. I'm gonna show you all about the inside, except the um, batteries and all that stuff. That's Derek's job. <laughs> I'll, I'll go through the batteries. Um, but yeah, we're down the beach. Beautiful sunny day. Kids are back at school today. <laughs> <laughs> so, couple of disclaimers to start with. Uh, when we were filming the uh, inside of the van, this is actually the second time we've had to film this because the first day we we're out here and it was blowing about 30 to 40 kilometers an hour. Went to edit all the video and it was just wind noise. Um, and while we were filming the first part, which is on the inside, um, we were actually staying at a friend's house. So all of our stuff was in the house. So if you do see empty cupboards and a, a spotless clean caravan, that's the main reason why. It doesn't normally look like that when we live in it for full time. I'm gonna make you put a video photo in here of what it actually <laughs> looks, looks like. like when we are living in it. That's right. Now, um, another disclaimer is that we are Lotus Ambassadors and that doesn't change our point of view. We'll tell you what we like and what we don't like. And one more is uh, we have been living in this van for about three months or so and it has been used so it's not showroom condition there are a few little scratches and uh whatnot like last last episode that we put out we went out to south lafroy and it got scratched we got we used in it we're using it for what it's used for anyway enough of this let's get stuck into showing you our brand new caravan we hope you like it Whew. I just wanted to say that um, the reason we didn't do a video when we first got the van three months ago was because we wanted to test it, run it, see what worked for us and how we liked things. Um, so we're about to show you how it works for us and what works for us as a family. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So we hope you like it. Let's start from the very front of this caravan. The hitch is the Cruise Master DO45 hitch. Um, with the weights, we need the 4.5 ton hitch. Uh, comes with the handbrake and all the uh, braking system. The breakaway safe, brake safe breakaway system is attached to the inner of the caravan, not on top. Now that purpose of that is, if once that pin pulls out, all four brakes lock up and stops the caravan from moving if it happens to detach from your car for any reason. Moving back into the jockey wheel. Um, it's not your average jockey wheel. We've gone for the Boss 370 Black Edition, I believe it is. Um, these things here are super lightweight, so it's not like the big heavy one that you, uh, you may get from other people. Um, so saving on weight and it drill up and down works so bloody good uh, i've never had an issue with them um, i opted for no wheels on this one uh, i've opted for the foot and for me that works absolutely a treat again the wheels are heavy the plastic plate is not and it's great for sand uh, moving back we've got a stone guard on uh, our previous van never had a stone guard because we had the stone stomper moving up to the bike rack now this is the grip sport bike rack it, uh, it attaches to your chassis. You have to ask for it pre-delivery um, pre and they put in an extra bar for you so that you can attach this Grip Sport um, bike rack holder. Now this thing holds four bikes and it's, it's all done. Just things slide up and down, the cables lock it in. It holds the bikes perfect and they don't rub against each other. Where the one that we had up on our toolbox, the bikes could um, rub against each other and scratch all the paint off. Moving on to the gas bottles. Um, as you can see, we've gone two small gas bottles. Now, our van is 100% gasless on the inside. These gas bottles are purely just for our barbecue because we do a lot of cooking outside. 
and I want to, still wanted to be able to use gas for the barbecue. What we can do is lose one of the uh, gas bottles and just have one four kilo gas bottle. Two nine kilo gas bottles weigh approximately 36 kilos. These ones weigh full, that is. These ones weigh full about eight to 10 kilos. So how much weight are you changing by getting rid of that and just having the one gas bottle is heaps. This is our little diesel tank. We have a diesel heater and a diesel hot water system in this caravan. And once we jump inside, we'll show you all of that and run through that with you. But um, the small little diesel tank holds about 10 to 12 liters. And again, still doesn't weigh as much as the two gas bottles if you were getting two nine kilo gas bottles. So another little weight saver there. These new boxes that uh, Lotus have designed and chucked on the front of these vans, they are super lightweight. They're, um, they're actually really, really, really light. Now, the new box comes with a shelf up the top and it's like a tunnel boot up the top there. So you've got about three, 400 gap and that goes from one side to the other. So there's lots of long storage there. Now, underneath on this side is my barbecue. I always have my barbecue in this front box. I like it, it works for me. It may not work for you, but I think it works great for me. Um, now, it comes with a generator slide. Now, I did ask for a barbecue slide and they accidentally put in a generator slide. But after using it, I actually like this heaps better. It holds so much stuff for your barbecue. So it holds your, your trays for your Weber, it holds your utensils, it holds just lots of little bits of pieces that the barbecue slide doesn't. All right, now this side of the uh, toolbox at the front, it has another generator slide on it. So if you wanted to carry a generator, we don't personally. Uh, it's got straps, it's got tie down points, you can put your generator in, tray comes in and out for easy access and egress. We've got it opted for a front window again on the front of our caravan. Wouldn't have a caravan without it. You can see your kids from every single angle. Now it's got two little uh, screws on the end and then a couple of clips here. That comes up, you lock that into place, you lock that into place and you got yourself a wicked view for places like where we are right now. Not only is it for uh, great views, but you're on the beach and you don't want to run your, car uh, your air conditioner all the time. And there is a nice sea breeze like there is today. Open up all your windows and the ventilation that comes through this front window is next level. Um, I'd highly recommend it just for that reason, let alone the scenic view as well. All right, just above our little window here is a 40 inch light bar. Now that shines down on the hitch so that you can hitch up at night, um, unhitch at night in case you rock up late. All right, so moving on to the actual caravan body now. Uh, the front tunnel boot, same as all tunnel boots, down she comes and uh, all of our stuff that we want to store in here is in here. That one there goes from this side to that side. It's a great size, um, especially for what we've got inside. Uh, moving up above the tunnel boot, we've got uh, an LED light. Now we've got three of them on this side of the caravan. One here um, above the first tunnel boot, and that can be, like all of them, can be white or amber. And you can have them as bright as you want, or you can dim it down to as dull as you want, which is another great feature once we get stuck inside. Uh, moving along to this boot here. Now, uh, this was sold to us as an outdoor kitchen. And we loved the idea and we thought, great, we could use it. We put power in there so that we can, uh, you know, have a thermo mix or uh, air fryer or whatever. And we can utilize this space with a bit of cooking from the barbecue. Um, but again, it's because we've lived in this caravan now for a little bit, we found a better function for it. Check this out. It's our shoe box. So all of our shoes, you know, a family of five, a lot of shoes and a lot of people on uh, all caravan forums always say, where's a great spot to put your shoes? People are building boxes underneath, adding more weight. This one works well just there as a shoe box. All right, so we've stuck with the Dometic awning. Um, the Dometic awning works fine for us. Pulls in, pulls out. Um, I've got a little YouTube video of uh, hints and tips with that one. Check that out. It'll save you a little bit of heartache there. But uh, yeah, the awning works fine. And big windows. Another big thing about this caravan is the more windows you've got on a beautiful spot like this, you open it up 
and the breeze just comes through. There's nothing better than a nice smelling breeze from the ocean too. So moving to the front door, it's a new front door for Lotus. The door itself has three locks. So it's not just one lock in the middle, it's actually got three dead bolts on there. So you can't jam it in there and pry that door open. So extra safe, extra security. And the fly screen itself has the crim safe uh, fly screen and it's got midi proof uh, mesh over the top of it. So it stops all those nasties getting in your caravan, which is super important in some places around Australia. Uh, the door handle acts as a light as well. Um, you can turn it on blue or you can turn it on bright and it also lights up the door well as well. Uh, moving down, we've got the double step. Because these caravans sit so high, uh, we've gone the double step. Sometimes we even need a third step depending on where we are and how the caravan's leveled. But I would highly recommend getting the double step if you were going to build one. Uh, moving back here, this little box right here is our Cruise Master. Um, controls for our air suspension. So we've got full air suspension on this caravan from Cruise Master and this is the uh, the control box for it. So it's got an outlet for a hose so if I want to pump up my tyres I can use the compressor and the air system from the caravan. So I can use one from my car to do my car, caravan to do the caravan. Um, super simple, put it on manual, you can put it up and down chuck it back on auto and it self levels itself out to the correct height that it was programmed at. This is the TV center. So if you wanna bring the TV from inside to outside, it's got all the controls here. It's got power plug, it's got the, the bracket for the holder, it's got all the aerials, it's got USB and it's got a radio out here as well. So if you wanna uh, pump this fusion stereo system, this speaker here is so bloody loud. It's, the neighbors don't appreciate it. But uh, anyway, that's the TV box, everything that you need to watch TV outside. Moving above, so this window here is the kitchen window. So the kitchen is on this side. We can open up that window. Now it is a little bit tinier and that's because the door opens on this side here and we wanna still be able to open the window and have the door open at the same time. All right, now this is one of my favorite features. We've been asking for this for a bloody long time and we've finally got a van with it on. It's the outdoor shower. Now you're saying every caravan has an outdoor shower. Yes, you are correct, but it's normally on the other side. You go for a swim and you're staying on the beach, you walk up, you're full of sand, you walk around, you wash your feet off, you walk back around, you got sand back on your feet, haven't you? So we've been asking for an outdoor shower to be on this side of our caravan for a couple of years now, and we've got it. And we used it at South Lafroy in our last episode, and we had our sea gear mat on the floor, and we were standing here and as we we're washing our feet the water and the sand are disappearing through the mat no mess on the mat no water having an outdoor shower either at the back or on this side of your caravan it's just super super useful it uh, it helps out so much with it and we love it in this position a few people have asked us about it and said that it's a little bit weird but we've used it and we absolutely love it here and that's why we got it we never used it on the other side no, that's right. We, we never once used it when it was on the other side because it was out of the way. Have a think about that one if you can get it on this side. I guarantee you, you will love it. Uh, moving along to the table. Uh, just a stock standard little table. This one. A lot of people have been asking what is in the back door. <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> All right. The back door. But we actually got this one put in for all of our chairs. Jade likes a big moon chair, you know, those big couch moon chairs. Jade likes them, doesn't want to get rid of them. And we had no storage left at the front for these big chairs, because they just take up everything. So we decided to put this rear door in with this little hatch, and I can fit three to four chairs in there, no worries. All right, let's have a look at this ass end. It uh, has my mangrove drag trailer on here at the moment. Um, so that's not a part of the caravan comes with its own brackets for the rear bar. Comes with one spare tire. We didn't want two this time. We only wanted one because we've never really had any issues with tires until our last trip. And that one there is dead flat from a sidewall cut. Um, but this rear bar has two jerry can holders on either side. It has a big wood box down here. So if you, before you get to camp, you can chuck all your wood in there. Um, LED lights, bottom and top. For clear vision so that everybody can see what you're doing with your indicators your brakes and whatnot reverse camera always 
has a reverse camera on these caravans. And again, another smaller, well, I'd say about a 20 to 30 inch light bar, just for the rear, so that when you are reversing or if you're working at the back here, you've got light. All right, so as a part of Lotus and GNS chassis spec, the, uh, the rear has two skid pads on them. So the back of the chassis comes out and it's got the two big skid pads so that if you're bottoming out with your caravan, it doesn't damage any of your caravan, it hits those skid pads. And just under those skid pads, there's some recovery points with a nice, couple of nice big shackles there. Um, so if you ever get bogged, you need to be pulled out backwards by your caravan. You've got loaded, uh, rated areas where you can do that gently and uh, pull that out. All right, these are the kids' bunks. So this floor pan plan for this floor plan um, only come with windows about this big. And then there was a big area here for, um, I think they had a mirror and stuff in it. We deleted the mirror and extended these windows out to be a bit bigger. All right, so underneath, we have our water tank banks. So um, we've got a big four banker that is for your general purpose. Um, so you can turn on one tank at a time. So if you want tank one on and the other three tanks off, you, uh, you leave them ones off. And then when that one's empty, turn it off, turn the other one on. Um, we've got our mains water connector. So that stays, uh, that stays there when you're at the caravan park, you plug into there, you've got mains water. And then our two discharge hoses at the back here. Uh, one is bypassing the grey water tank and the other one is going through the grey water tank. So we can isolate them and turn them off depending on if you want to use the grey water tank or not. Laundry window above the toilet. You always need ventilation in your toilet, especially when you've got my wife who goes, nah, it's me. <laughs> especially, especially when there's uh, poos and stuff getting done. <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs> Derek does. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you need ventilation and uh, there's also roof ventilation which we'll get into. Uh, underneath that is the toilet hatch. We've just gone the conventional canister toilet, no, nothing fancy here. Working our way down a little bit. Um, now these points here that are attached to the chassis and the, uh, the mud guards and that, that's your jacking point. So you can get a high lift jack or uh, any jack that you've got stick it under there and that's how you jack up your caravan to change your tyre. If you watched last week's episode, it's a perfect example of it from when we tore that uh, sidewall off. Uh, moving around, this is where our fridge sits. Um, it's got two open grates uh, for breathing. We've got the one, two, three, four, five. That's right, five water tanks. Above that is your power um, inlet and that comes with uh, fuses as well. So. Um, that's super handy. But this box here sits underneath where our couch is inside. Now inside this box is a bunch of bloody goodies. Check this out. It is so beautifully bloody installed. It's got all the uh, DC DC chargers, the MPT solar controller, um, all the fuses. Uh, between Lotus and Enerdrive, they've done a super job of installing this system. Um, We'll get into the system inside, but this, this system that you can access from the outside just makes it that little bit easier. Obviously, there's a lot going on, so we needed access from the outside. So we've got two more windows, one for the bed, one for the couch, and we've also got a couple of LED lights here, one above the tunnel boot and one in the middle here, so that if you ever need to do anything over this side, you've got light, again, white, amber, and you can dim them. Um, and that pretty much wraps up this side of the caravan. Come and check out the suspension and tires that we're running. Uh, on this one, we are running the Cooper tires. I've never had Cooper tires on any vehicle that I've ever owned. I've always had BF Goodrich. Um, so very interested to see how these go. These are the Cooper Discoverer, Discoverer Rugged Trek, and they are a 285 70 17 inch rims. Um, so super big tires, especially for a caravan. Uh, we're running the tire pressure management gauge again from Safety Dave. Um, that saved us a bunch of tires so far. Uh, that system works great for us. And we've got the Method race wheel rims. Um, so they are all coupled, coupled up together on the Cruise Master ATX Stage 4 suspension. Um, <clears throat> so this suspension, obviously the airbags. I wouldn't have any caravan without this suspension. The amount of stuff that we've taken our caravan through with this suspension, and it protects not only the chassis and the caravan, but it just protects everything inside this caravan. It's, it literally, 
and I, I don't want to sound like a salesperson because I'm not. I'm not sponsored by Cruise Master or anything like that. But it is a cushion. It is like riding on a cloud when this caravan is. If you watch our last episode when we were going through Yardy Creek on the way out to South Lafroy, my car's bouncing and the caravan's just straight. My car. Sorry, Jade's car. Um, so yeah, that's that's the suspension and the tires and the rims that we're running. Um, all together, let's hope that it all works pretty well. So far, the Coopers, a big sidewall cut. Um, so have you got any feedback on the Coopers? If you're a fan, let me know. If you're not a fan, let me know. Um, I've never used them before, but I'm very interested to find out how they go. Uh, moving a bit forward is the brake controller. So this one here has disc brakes. So full disc brake system on this uh, suspension. You've got a choice of drum or disc with the uh, ATX. And we've gone the disc. And this is the uh, hydraulic over electric brake controller, which sits nicely here in a nice little box outside. Moving underneath all of the caravan. Underneath this caravan is all fully protected. So it's got checker plate all the way underneath it, underneath every single water tank. So that these water tanks are protected and all the hosing and all your stuff that you want protected doesn't get hit by stones and chips and sticks and stuff like that. So it's got full guarding all the way underneath, which is just your standard trooper spec on these Lotus caravans. Let's talk about what everybody wants to talk about when it comes to caravan, and that is weights. The weight of this caravan, and let me just put another disclosure out there, this caravan was built to be towed by an American truck. We have an F-350 that will be towing this caravan, so it's not designed for your 200 series, your 79 series, your Nissan patrols. It is designed to be towed with an American truck. The weight of this caravan from factory is 3.4 ton. Yes, it is huge. But we have a 4450 kilogram um, allowance. So that gives us just over uh, 1.1 ton, give or take, of stuff that we can have in this van. Um, axle rating is four ton, ball weight rating is 450 kilos, hence the, uh, the four and a half ton hitch, which is all legal and um, allowed to be used. All right, so that's our weights, that's what it is. Let's move on side and see how Jade has designed this interior and all the features that we have in there. Let's go. All right guys, let's get into it. We're gonna start filming, but first up, I need to turn the aircon on. We've got that super monsoon coming in and it is hot here in Exmouth at the moment. Let's get it cranking. All right guys, we're gonna start off at the bunk area. It worked really well last time, so we're gonna show you how it, what looks. We've gone for a very similar sort of layout, few minor changes. We've gone, still got the large windows for the kids for ventilation. They've got lights, they've got USB points, they've got their leather pouches and Sirocco fans in each bunk. However, we've put Sirocco fans in different locations this time. This location is not working for us. Um, it's making the kids get their head bumped all the time on them. Um, so consider where you're going to put your Sirocco fans. This option was not good for us. Um, but yeah, the bunk area works really well. They are, we have shortened them, however, which is down to 1900. Um, and yeah, the kids have got their own storage shelves each, one each. That's plenty for us, for the kids. 
And we've got the washing machine at the back. We've got the removable ladder, lockable doors. They've also got um, a skylight at the top there. And that's pretty much our bunk area. Simple and easy for the kids. All right, guys, I'm just gonna add. So in this area, we've got all the data points and the power cables for the out there internet connection. Now, originally we were gonna go for out there internet, but now we've decided to go with Starlink and that is working excellent for us. All right, and I've also gone for the three and a half kilo washing machine front loader this time. This is not really working for me with the three kids. I wish I had gone for the four kilo. So consider your options with what size washing machine you go for if you're looking at full-time traveling. All right, let's talk about the bathroom. This is awesome. This space is plenty of space for traveling families. It's got a massive shower with great water facilities. Now I have created the best storage solution. I have a linen cupboard. This is an absolute game changer. If you're a mom and you have nowhere to put your kids stuff when you're traveling, all your toys, your linen cupboards, your towels, your toilet paper, your cleaning products, everything. This is my favorite thing that I've added to this caravan. All right, now last time we had this whole length was the shower and I just felt it was a massive waste of space. And this is how I've opted to put the um, linen cupboard in here. We've gone for just a normal size shower, which gives us the opportunity to have extra storage and just a normal size shower. And it's working perfect for me. All right, we've just still gone for the normal cassette toilet still not sure about the um composting, composting toilets <laughs> um being kobe being a boy i i just can't fathom he's gonna get it in the little cassette thing so not just yet we're not ready to go for a composting toilet last time i did have a black sink and i've definitely gone for a white sink this time being that i hated seeing the toothpaste in there um, but yeah, you've got your three drawers here, one for your bigger drawer. This has just got all our little bits and pieces in it. I've also got some cute little things up here. Overhead cupboard up the top here, another downlight. We've got a window there and we've also got an extra skylight here with a fan in it for ventilation for those smelly poos. Now you may ask how we get privacy in this caravan. We have not one, but two doors separating us from the kids. And that is definitely working a treat. <laughs> All right, who's ready to check out the kitchen? So we've gone completely gasless internally within the caravan and I'm loving it. I love the full smooth kitchen bench top, no little grooves to clean. So I've got two induction um, elements on here. Now this is something super special that we've added and we did a lot of research. So you will notice that we've actually deleted the microwave from our old caravan and last caravan we didn't have an oven. Well this caravan I've incorporated two things. I have got a, uh, a convention oven. So it is a microwave and an oven and a grill all within one and it's freaking awesome. It does chew a lot of power. Um, we have run it a few times off grid, um, but mostly when we're off grid, we are going to be using the barbecue. But when we're not off grid and we have got enough power, this thing is, it covers all aspects. So I'm loving the convention oven. Um, pretty much all the same, just got your overhead cupboards, your normal cupboards through here with your drawers for your pots and pans. We've still got the extra large fridge, which I can't live without that. We've also still got the pantry. In this area, we've got the aircon as well. Okay, while we're here with the aircon, lots of you have asked us, does the aircon reach the bunk area? Now with this caravan, what we've decided to do is opt to have this little plinth, I think it's called, um, shortened. So it isn't being cut through there and the aircon goes down through that way. Now. If it's 44 degrees, the aircon is gonna be doing overworking. It's gonna be hot. But on a 35 degree day, the kids are more than cool enough down there. They've also got the fans, they've got big windows. Um, we are only in the caravan pretty much at night time. So we live outside most of our days. Um, so yes, it is more than enough to get us through. 
Um, so yeah, let's move on. So we've got filtered water on this side and just normal tap water on this side. Um, as you can see, we're not plugged into any mains, but the pressure is solid. New water pumps are awesome in this caravan. Um, so yeah, so that's our water taps in the kitchen. All right, this is our dinnerette. This is where the kids normally eat their breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, I have gone for a lighter leather in this section. Do I regret it? No, because I really like it. Does Derek not agree with it? A little bit, but I still really like it. It just means you're not having the black. I, I do have to wipe it down quite regularly, but no stains, just comes off with the leather. Um, as you can see, we've got leather pouches throughout the caravan, we've got um, surround sound systems, two lights here, overhead cupboards, and USB points on both sides up here. We put lots of USB points wherever we could find a spot to put an extra USB point, we've popped it. Um, down the bottom here, we've also got a power point down this side, um, and it's a telescopic um, table that moves in and out um, so which gives us a lot of space through here and we've just gone for a bench straight across as opposed to an L shape I feel like when you have an L shaped it cuts off your width through here um, so I never go for an L shaped lounge um, and this works really well for us if we want to sit down and have a family dinner inside me and Derek normally just sit here or Derek will sit at the bed and put his stuff on the table and I'll sit here and we just have a little chair in here and we all just eat around here. Um, so that's how this area works for us. <laughs> Alright, this is the new bedroom. So what have we done here? This works a treat. We have so much more space on this side. Um, I was a bit worried about having, obviously Derek makes me sleep on this side of the bed but I've got no issues just sliding down there, crawling out of bed most of the time. I lay about here and Derek gets about this much space. So I just slide down here if I need to go to the toilet at night. Um, we've got big windows here, big windows there. And like our other caravan, we've also got the window at the back, which gives us plenty of front, plenty of ventilation. Um, we'll not have a caravan without that. Absolutely love it. Um, has the door that closes down on the side when we're driving as usual. Um, lots of new little features in this little section. Uh, hot water system, USBs, lights, overhead cupboards, plenty of storage. Now, come over here. Now, you know when you're budding awnings with somebody, let me just slide that out of the way, is that in your way, cameraman? You know when you're budding awnings and you're in Tasmania and it's bloody cold and you don't want to go outside and talk to your neighbours. Winding that the correct way. This is my new little lounge. I love it. Um, it was very umming and ahhing whether we needed this, whether we turn this into storage and this is probably another one of my favourite new features in this caravan. But I love it. This is also our charging dock station so we have all our cameras. Um, phones, everything that needs charging, laptops, this is where we store everything for charging. Um, works fantastic for us. We've got the TV up here. We've also got, we've gone for the bigger TV in this caravan. So we've also got one fan in this um, section. So I get the fan, Derek doesn't. Um, but he gets full blown aircon on this side. And normally we don't even have it on. I hate the fan. I just open the window if I'm hot. And that's it. Bedroom. One of the other big things that uh, we really wanted, I did a lot of research on. So when we were parked in the caravan park and we had the instant hot water, um, gas bottles, we had two nine kilo gas bottles on the last caravan and they would last us with the showers that the girls were taking. You don't want to know how long. They were um, going forever and the two gas bottles would last two to three weeks. So I was doing lots of research on finding out a way that we can have a uh, hot water system that can either run on gas, power, and um, whatever else. And the best one that I found, and we've never used a diesel system before, but we've now got a diesel heater in the caravan and a diesel hot water system. And it's from Diesel Heat, and I think they're based in Tasmania. 
Um, but the diesel heat system, so it runs on, obviously when you're off grid, it's got a little diesel tank and it runs off diesel. So the diesel powers it and it's like five kilowatts, which just charges that hot water system up straight away. Then when you're on power, um, 240 volt, it switches over and it uses 240 volt power and that's at two kilowatts. But the most exciting thing about it for me is when you're off grid and you've got solar coming in, the battery and this system all talk together. So when the batteries are at 100%, it flicks a little switch and goes to the hot water system and starts charging up using solar power, starts heating up the water. Um, admittedly, it doesn't work as well as what I thought it would with the hot water system, um, with the solar, but it gets warm, it gets lukewarm with the amount of solar that uh, we've got anyway. But this is the system, again, it is a lot bigger than what we're expecting. Um, and it does take up a fair bit of storage, but I, I, do, I do actually really rate it. Um, at first, I was, as soon as I seen it, and I'd seen it took up this whole underbed space, I had a negative thought in my head straight away. And, but after using it, using it off grid, using it on power, it really, really works well. I like it. Um, but some people might want storage more than this system. So each to their own. But for me, I love it. All right, so to partner up with the diesel system underneath the bed is this awesome little unit here. Um, it's set beside the bed and you push it on and it tells you the room temperature. And then it also tells you the temperature that you want to set your water to. So, um, or your diesel heater to. So at the moment, the diesel heater is set to 24 degrees. Um, we haven't really had it on because where we're staying at the moment is always 30 degrees. Uh, then you can turn the fan speed on, up, up and down, which controls the diesel heater. And then when you turn the fan off, that's what controls the temperature for your diesel hot water system. Uh, great little unit, really easy to use and super easy. Let's talk power systems. The power system that runs this whole little caravan that we've got, well, not little. Um, so we've got a full energy drive system. Uh, it starts off, we'll start off with the batteries. I have three 300 amp hour batteries, giving us a total of 900 amp hours. Uh, obviously full lithium. Um, they sit underneath the lounge table um, and tucked in behind the, um, the batteries. And that's that panel that we've seen on the outside. That is where all of the uh, solar controllers and the uh, DC to DC controller sits as well. So we have two uh, M MPPT solar um, controllers. We have a DC to DC controller, which controls the solar and uh, obviously the um, input from the car when you uh, hook the car up that uh, can siphon the power through and charge the batteries up. And then underneath our bed, so we have a inner drive combi charger and inverter. The charger is 120 amps, so when you're plugged into 240 volts at a caravan park or your house, it uh, chucks 120 amps straight into your battery. So it's charging at a very fast rate, uh, which you need with the battery system that we've got, because if you didn't have a large charger, uh, you'd be struggling to get the power back in there and the inverter is a 3000 watt inverter now sitting up top of this caravan we have seven 200 watt solar panels uh, they're the Enerdrive 200 watt solar panels so that's 1.4 kilowatts of solar that we've got that the sun can boost into this caravan um, uh, recently we went on a trip to south of freud which was our last episode and we did not go below 85 percent and the sun was just by mid not even midday by mid morning we're back up to 100 percent um we didn't ever run the aircon because it was actually pretty nice out there we could just open up all the windows and have the sea breeze come in but um yeah this this solar this power system is next level it's um it's more than what you would need if it was just a weekend caravan but if you're going to live in it full time and do as much off-grid stuff as possible it's a great system to have um and coupled up with that so the one that uh, drives all of that system, well not drives, but uh, controls it, is the C-Zone controller. And uh, let's jump into the C-Zone and have a look.
at the C-Zone, the controller. This thing is next bloody level. So this is the main page that you've got. Up the top here, you've got camp mode, night mode, sleep mode, travel mode, storage mode, and they're preset modes that you can just hit that button and it changes all settings straight away, instantly. Um, the other thing is the screen that it's on at the moment. So all exterior lights on, off. Just with one button, I can turn every single light on in this caravan, either internally or externally and then your individual ones. So lounge, on, off. So then ones are off, then ones are on. Now, also, if you hold the light button, it gives you this little screen and you can dim the lights to whatever percentage you want. So if you're sitting outside and you don't want full bright whites or you don't want full bright oranges, you just dim them down a little bit so that it just sets the right tone for what you need. Um, Scroll it across and you've got uh, battery power. So we click into the battery, 13.17 volts at the moment, um, drawing 6.3 amps, state of charge is 86%, our amp, amp power is remaining 774, 12 hours and 20 minutes until we're, our batteries are completely flat. Um, so that's all the information on that. Plus, not only that, it shows you every single water tank and boy have we got bloody water tanks um water tank number uh one two three four five and a gray water tank now water storage so we have four main water tanks and they are all 95 liter tanks we have one 50 liter drinking filtered water which is the one that we showed you earlier and one 50 liter gray water tank and all the information is up there. So at the moment, we've just been gotten back from camping and they're all at 0%. It's saying 6%, there must be still a little bit of water in there, but that's all the information that you need. There's only one screen and it tells you everything that you need to know what's going on in your caravan, which I absolutely love. Um, going on to that, you've got all the uh, alarms, monitoring, control, the modes, and you can set it up to however you want. So it's preset at the Lotus um, factory, but you can change the settings if, if you know how to. Um, I don't need to. Lotus has set it up perfect for us. And yeah, C-Zone works a treat. Okay, so partnering up with the C-Zone control panel up there, there is also another one situated right beside my bed and it has six little buttons and that changes all the modes so if you hear something at night um, you can turn all exterior lights on if one of your kids fall out of the bunk beds you can hit a button and turn all the lights inside the caravan so that you can see what's going on um, it's got different settings different buttons does different features um, the only thing that i don't like about it is these bright lights now they don't seem very bright at the moment but when it's night time they are like a lighthouse shining in your eyes when you're trying to sleep. Uh, I generally cover it over with um, a bit of cloth or a tea towel or something like that. Um, I haven't figured out how to turn them off. I can turn them off for like 30 seconds and then they come back on. Um, so as much as what I love it and it's easy, I can just turn lights on and off left, right and center. The bright lights is shining in my eyes. Don't do it for me. But uh, anyway, that's the C-Zone and the battery system. All right, guys, that wraps up our little walkthrough of our Lotus 23.3 foot uh, triple bunk caravan. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Walking through a bit of water. I uh, really hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. Hopefully it helps you design and build your next caravan. Um, if you've got any questions or you want to know anything, um, please drop a comment and we'll get back to you. Um, until next time, we'll see you then. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. See you later.